And one of the questions that leads us to think of is, is this ocean of consciousness, when it is within us, something that we generate? Or can we influence this ocean of consciousness? Can we look at things differently if we actually expand our consciousness by being connected to what's outside? But traditionally, the way we look at consciousness is called functional consciousness. It basically is, I have a brain, you have a brain, we talk to each other, and that's the way it goes. It's you, it's me, we're separate. A less traditional view of that is that it's called foundational consciousness. The idea here is that the brain is not a generator of consciousness, but is a transmitter of consciousness. That the brain, rather than being the source of energy, happens to be something through which energy can flow. Your brain, right now, in this very moment, is connected to my brain because you have eyes and ears, and my brain is connected to your brain in the same way. You are also connected to the person right next to you. You are connected to a person on the other end of this room. You may think you're all coming here for single objectives, but we are unified by some cause. Every person in this room, at some level, has some kind of interest in understanding how they can use their brains to become more resilient. We are unified by that cause. We are already a community of people who are invested in this notion of well, I don't know if we're invested, but we're suddenly joined in this notion of how we can change ourselves. In the human brain, there's a system of nerve cells called mirror neurons, which means if I move my hand like this or if I do that, your brain mounts a response that looks identical to as if you were doing it. So we have mirror neurons, and we mirror not only each other's movements, but intentions and emotions as well. So if you surround yourself with people who have negative emotions, it is going to get into your brain, literally. Their emotions will activate your mirror neurons, and they will get into your brain. Empathy and mirror neurons correlate. The extent to which you can feel what someone else is feeling depends on your mirror neurons, and different people have different capacities, which you can train. You can actually train people to use their mirror neurons more effectively. We recognize that what we feel is what someone else is feeling a lot of the time. And a lot of the time, we're not even in possession of our own power because you're not in possession of your own emotion. And it goes both ways, right? If you're working on teams within organizations, and you're thinking about team alignment, and you're thinking about how can I get my team to work more effectively, studies show that there is an independent factor called the C factor for collective intelligence that is greater than the maximum intelligence within that group, and it's greater than the average intelligence within the group. The C factor is because when I am in a group, if, my, if I have my thoughts in my head, and if there's one other person, I'm, my brain is going to have my thoughts plus your thoughts. And your brain is going to have your thoughts plus my thoughts. And your brain is also going to have your thoughts plus my thought plus the sum of what I'm representing, because I'm going to partially represent some of what you've got. And you multiply that by several people, and all of a sudden, You've got brains that are not individual brains anymore. It's everybody's brains in a, in a very complex situation. And what studies show is that teams, are, and I think you, you don't need studies to tell you this, teams do not always work, because it really does depend on what's getting mirrored, and what it's anchored to, and what the fundamental goal is within that team. There were two factors that emerged as being very powerful when it came to successful teams. One was being female. And it turned out that that factor was washed out because it interacted too much with the second factor, which was social sensitivity. And social sensitivity does not mean, oh, I love you and I want to do this. Social sensitivity is simply, 
understanding that you are open to another point of view. So social sensitivity is about having the capacity to internalize information and then make an assessment and see it fresh and new every time. Resilience comes from social sensitivity because it allows you to assimilate data accurately. It allows you to say, I'm not just going to bring my past to bear on what you're hearing and I'm going to cut out half of the data. It actually, resilience allows you to take in this external source of energy. The theory behind collective consciousness that's supported biologically is the fact that we are open to the world, we have brains, we have mirror neurons, and I am represented by you, no matter what. So you have to ask yourself for some life-saving measures. Because when, as soon as the person steps into your office or you step into theirs, your mirror neurons have taken the whole identity. It's like eating something you don't like. It's like right in your brain, and you have to deal with it. So you have to figure out, what do I do with the image of this person in my brain? You know, you can say something out loud to direct your brain to cope in the, in the moment while you're not saying everything else about it. Great shoes, and I hate everything else about you, but great shoes. It actually changes the way you feel. So you respond to internalizing that mirror to your own freak out by saying, I'm in a, I know what mirrors in my brain. Let me shift to a completely different zone, and I'll mirror something else in his brain, which is, wouldn't you like to know? Boy, this is this really cool thing. And you create, you, you gain control of that particular mind state because you shift mirrors to a completely different, and you create a new mirror.